You are now listening to the Pop Up Podcast. It's quite literally a podcast for whatever pops up. Here's the host of the show, director, producer, writer, and however else you know him, Pete Ferrero. Let's jump in. Someone slowed us down, but let's jump in. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so excited to have all of you guys here to chat about what's going on with the coronavirus and the restaurant industry. I'm gonna give you all a chance to just jump in and introduce yourselves first, and then uh, we'll kind of jump into some of the topics. But uh, I'll just ca- shout out your names and then you can just jump in. So let's start with Mike Carino, because he's the first person I see. Hi, I'm Mike, um, Big and Prince, Mike's Boston Sandwich Shop. Um, yeah, Mike Clinton Nutley. Jersey, New Jersey, yeah. Jersey. Elizabeth Faulkner. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. Um, I live in New York, but I'm I was out here getting ready to do a series of events, and uh, so now I'm at home, um, just hanging out until whenever. Very cool, Caroline Schiff. I see you. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Caroline. Uh, I'm the pastry chef at Gage and Tolner in Brooklyn, New York, which was supposed to open on March 15th. Oh, wow. And we closed on the 14th, or we yeah. we decided to shut it down on the 14th. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. We'll get into I know it. it's so good and so pretty in there. Thank you. Yeah, a couple of you I know made it for soft opening, but um, we're all in the same boat. We're gonna. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Let's go to Hillary Sterling. I'm Hillary. I'm the chef and partner at Drake's in New York. And Ariane. Hey, I'm Ariane Duarte. I have Ariane Kitchen and Bar in New Jersey. Uh, we have temporarily closed. And then uh, Claire Robinson. Hi, I'm Claire, uh, New York City. Um, I restaurant consultant and uh, food entertainment biz. Ryan. Uh, hi, guys. Brian DiPersio. Uh, I have a couple of restaurants in New Jersey, one in Montclair, Fashino, two in Jersey City, Patello, and Kitchen Step. They are all closed as of right now. I tried to do some takeout, um, but <clears throat> I, uh, I decided against it because I wanted to uh, keep me and my safe. Um, so I already have somebody close to me that's sick, uh, and uh, I just... Uh, didn't want to risk anything. Not somebody I was in, in um, contact with, but a family member. So yeah. it, it kind of changes your, your, your mental thoughts on, you know, staying open or not. And uh, Allison Fasano is here, right? That's right. I am here. Um, I'm Allison Fasano. I'm actually in Long Island, New York. And, um, Right now, this kind of like staying home, not working in a restaurant, clearly because we're all closed. So just uh, staying at home, and that's about it right now. And then Robbie. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Robbie Felice, uh, chef and partner in two restaurants in New Jersey, uh, Biagio Ristorante and Osteria Crescendo. Cool. And then Leah finally can hear us. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the party. Yeah. Hi everybody, I'm Leah, uh, chef and partner at South and Pine in Morristown and Central and Maine in Madison, and a uh, special guest, Luna. Yay! <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I guess why don't we go, start with you, Caroline? That must have been tough. You guys are supposed to open this brand new, beautiful restaurant. Yeah. Talk to us about what happened and, you know, you know, talk, give us what's going on for you. I mean, you know, it, like shittiest timing in the world. Um, but um, yeah, we had like kind of just gotten through like a round of um, soft opening, a week of sort of a friends and family kind of thing. And um, we were like, so energized and so ready to go and then as it sort of became clear that this situation with um COVID-19 was really escalating um we just realized that it it wasn't going to be safe to to open um and 
yeah, we we just had to basically say we're postponing it until um, until this is all over. Yeah, you know, which is it's really hard. It, I, I mean, like we're all in the same boat. I mean, every single restaurant is in New York and across the country is pretty much screwed right now. Um, and but it felt like a little like just even more like punch in the gut when you're like wait I was just ready to I was just ready to get started with everything and now we just have to put it on hold um but that being said like there's no doubt in my mind this is the right decision um people in New York I mean it's it's every day the numbers go up and it's, it's so contagious and it's just, it's not safe. So yeah. I'm very much supportive of the decision to, to call it off. What about you, Leah? Um, so I'm sure that everyone would, I don't know. I would think everyone would agree. It was like an emotional roller coaster over the past couple weeks um, to have something hit so quickly and have such a devastating effect on all of our businesses like literally blindsided all of us um last week from wednesday to sunday with like one thing after another where it was like the theater next door was closing and then basketball games shut down and then broadway shut down and then on Friday, they made a cook in Morristown. And then by Sunday night, they said we were only allowed to take out delivery ports. By Monday morning, they made a physical state in Missouri. Um, it got very, um, it was a lot, a lot of news very fast. And, you know, when things like that happen, you're trying to make the best decision. And I, I you know, I was going back and forth with my partners. And finally, we came to this decision like, we have to at least try to get in this game of takeout and delivery to see if we can generate some kind of revenue while this is all going on. And, and so that's eventually what we did after I laid off the whole staff, I brought back to and Friday we reopened and like, thankfully it was very busy and I had to bring back three more people. So now I'm employing six people and I think like, it could get better. Listen, it could also get worse. We have no idea what's going to happen, but I'm not allowing anyone to step foot in my restaurant. I'm only bringing stuff out to you, leaving it on the table outside or dropping it like in your car, or I'm leaving it on your doorstep. So that there is no contact with anyone because it is very scary and it is very contagious and none of us want to get sick either. But like, if we want to have a shot at this, I feel like we need to stay in the game for as long as we can. Yeah. What about you, Hillary? <laughs> You know, we last week we worked, you know, down to the wire, serving brunch myself on Sunday, and uh, you know we had an emergency partner meeting at four o'clock, and it was a five to six vote of closing, and obviously the sixth person jumped on board at some point, but we had a we had a conversation in the safety of our. Um, I work in a group that's you know, five restaurants, it's 300 people. So we had to make a decision, the six of us, for those 300 people. Um, you know, I'm not saying next week I might go back and do, uh, you know, takeout. That's something that, you know, our food is definitely warrants takeout. Um, but at that point, our restaurants are big, the overhead's high, turning everything on. But, you know, we weren't in the position to make um, that financial decision at that moment. So we have a call tomorrow. We'll rehash it again. You know, we have a full chain of managers. We have a full chain of line coaches, food lockers, checking in every day to make sure they're okay. And I still have food in the restaurants. So what we will do if anyone needs food is start delivering the rest of the food to the staffs, whoever needs food. But for right now, it's, you know, we – it was a sad moment, and some of the cooks understood, and some of them had no idea what they were getting into. Uh, and that was the hardest part to really understand that, like, when they're like, when are we opening? When are we opening? And they don't really understand what. Yeah. So, how about, how about you? Yeah. How about Ariane? Um, yeah, pretty much the same with everybody else. Yeah. I think for us, we try to take out, and like Lee was saying, the unknown every day got so crazy, and every day hearing things, and, um, 
it got bigger and bigger. And I think my staff, because that's who I really concern myself with a lot. Um, I think they really got it. And they understood. And I think they were okay knowing that when we did close, they were okay with it, knowing that they were all going to be okay and safe. And a lot of them left the state. A lot of them are hunkering down with their families. Um, so I think it was our best finish just to shut our doors. Our, I donated a ton of food to our local pantry. My gas is off. My water is off. My electric refrigerator is emptied. Um, and knowing that we will go back, hopefully sooner or later, with a very great fresh start. And that's the only thing, you know, the hope that I have um, that I look forward to. Yeah, and for, I have a question. For, yeah, can I ask a question? Um, have any of you had any conversations with your partners or with like, your landlords? Yeah, about you know your commercial rent. Yeah, I, if I can jump in. Um, so we've already um, gotten knowing that we don't have to pay our mortgage for three months. We've gotten that um, cleared off, so I don't have to pay my mortgage. Um, we. It, the biggest, one of the biggest things is, is how they're having the, they're like one of the only ones that aren't giving us a break right now is health insurance. Mm. Um, yeah. But we did get like phone bills, mortgage, water. A lot of them are giving us um, a, a, like a grace period. What about somebody else? Yeah. So I, I actually, um, extended i did a suspension on my house mortgage for three months yeah. my and they they literally did that so fast it yeah. was like i thought i was ordering takeout food like it was just like <laughs> just like i'd like to suspend my mortgage and the woman was like okay no problem we'll send you a letter like it was so easy um wow. Now, according to my landlord for my restaurant, uh, my one restaurant in Montclair, um, he's giving me a little pushback, but he's like saying, I'm going to work with you. But to be honest with you, I've been in Montclair 17 years. Yeah. I'm, I, I, he's, we've never had an issue. He's like, we're, I'm one of his best, you know, tenants. Um, and I mean that with like zero exaggeration, never late, nothing. And, <laughs> So when it's gonna it's gonna hit him a little bit because I I'm not gonna pay him I'm right. just gonna tell him I'm gonna tell him I'm not I'm not omitting the payment I'm just not paying you now when right. we reopen oh, yeah. figure it out I'm if my yeah. if if my mortgage on my house you know is X amount of money which I bought this house only two years ago and they're willing to take it the, the, la the three payments 27 years and three months from now then my landlord can do it after 17 totally. years yeah. you know mason quiet sorry but you dog. that's okay you also have a complication too in a sense where one of the restaurants you have holds weddings and i've have shot there that it's a beautiful venue for the, for the social events and whatnot but you probably well, had a you probably had to postpone events on top of everything, not just the restaurants, but you probably had to deal with a little bit of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, Batello in Jersey city is a restaurant and a uh, wedding venue. It's right on the water. We're 10,000 square feet. Um, <clears throat> you already know that we closed for 18 months, three years Correct. ago yeah. because of the pier. We reopened January of 2019. So we've been open uh, for 13, 14 months reopened. So this is really, um, it's like a kick in, yeah, excuse me, ladies, but a kick in the nuts. Like, it's, okay. it's, it's the second time that this is happening to us. Right. Um, and the, the weddings that we had, we, we, oh, so we've had weddings booked, uh, every Saturday, three weeks ago, all the way to the end of the year. Right. So, so they bought out the restaurant. Um, there's there's no restaurant service, just a wedding every Saturday night. Uh, so far, my our event planner has been working on replacing them to future dates because they already know that they can't move the wedding anywhere else. Right. So now they're just trying to keep the venue that they originally picked 
and and just get a date. Now the problem is is they're not going to get a Saturday date because they're right. already gone. So we're offering Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And you know, I think with the situation, a lot of people are going to understand. But there's definitely a, a small amount of people that are not going to understand, or they're just going to be like, "Hey, I'm going to squeeze this place and try sure. to get a discount out of this wedding, even though." I signed a contract for forty thousand dollars <laughs> six months ago, nine months ago. Yeah. So, so it's tough. It's definitely tough. But we're, we have we haven't had any cancellations um, yet. Right. Um, but we also um, and we're trying to keep the weddings because we have, uh, you know, we don't. So we have deposits for all these future weddings. Right. If I have a separate, you know, a separate bank, we have a separate bank account from the actual restaurant bank account for deposits. It's probably like six hundred thousand dollars sitting in that account that we haven't touched. But if people start canceling, we have to start paying them back. Exactly. Yeah, that's tough. Hey, Robbie, what about you, man? I mean, kind of like Leah and everyone else said, you know, just totally blindsided. I mean, I feel like I was having like the best year of my life. Nothing could go wrong. You know, I got nominated for James Beard. Uh, I got nominated for like either Young Guns. I was going to go compete in the World Pasta competition. And then all of a sudden there was like talk of this. I was like telling everyone, don't worry about it. And then. Next thing you know, there's, like, businesses closing down left and right. Um, I mean, my partners, my dad, you know, we're in it together. We don't have any big investors, you know, no big money people backing us. So it's kind of like do or die trying to fight the fight. Um, we did delivery and takeout out of both restaurants for a little while just to kind of see what we could generate from them. Um, we kind of found out that Osteria wasn't really bringing in what we wanted it to. So we officially kind of closed that down. Um, I kind of had the idea of turning Diageo into like a market. I mean, I feel as though all these people are, you know, piling into shop rights and Trader Joe's and whatever it may be. So, you know, if we have five people inside that market, at one time, that's like a lot for us. Um, I'm a huge believer in not wasting anything, you know, so I just wanted to take whatever we had and kind of offer it in the market. You know, we're not really doing it to make a ton of money. We're not going to make a ton of money. It's, just more, it's more to kind of use up what we had, use up what's around, kind of have a new idea into play. And when I did this new idea, I noticed that it was just like, such positive feedback like everything in our industry was kind of so negative lately to where like everyone was bummed everyone was upset like and it's just so positive like people walk in that door and see that we turned like a sit-down restaurant into a market and everyone that walks in is just smiling like they're looking over the product i'm there talking with them and like people are just happy and it makes me happy so it was kind of a really good idea we're kind of rolling with it we kind of set some more like standards into play where we're doing it from like Thursday to Sunday. The market is 11 to 8 PM. We're doing delivery four to eight and like kind of starting a whole new restaurant schedule, but not necessarily a restaurant. And hopefully, you know, people are kind of following along with us. I mean, yeah, not to mention we got to bring in some revenue, which is great, but just like everyone else said, you know, like, trying to suspend our rent or kind of defer our rent and talking to people to see who's going to work with us. You know, I know me and my dad sat down and talked about taking out another SBA loan. We're like, do we really want to put ourselves in more debt over this? And, you know, we decided not to. Um, it's also nice to be able to employ some of our, some of our employees, just like Leah said, like it was awesome to have a really busy Friday and be like, Oh my God, you know, we need to take two more people on. Hey, guys, you want to come work? And, like, their reactions were like, oh, hell yeah, really? Like, and it just felt good. Like, it was, like, happiness to, like, have, be able to have people working. And, honestly, you see people walk into this market and seeing people just see their eyes, like, when you turn a restaurant into a market. And it's just excitement. So it's really good to kind of keep the positive attitude and, like, you know, talk with colleagues about it and, it's just positivity, and that's kind of my real yeah. support behind it. 
And and Mike, you have a sandwich shop, so you are open. You can take do takeout, yeah. Yeah, I mean, my supply is rather different than everybody else. You know, about ten months ago, I forcefully was closed out of my restaurant. So I kind of went through this a year ago. Uh huh. You know, not much notice. Massive issues with the landlord. Thing in Prince shut down within a matter of weeks. You know. Pulled the carpet out from under me. I lost everything. Uh, it was just a fucking nightmare. You know? Yeah. Nightmare I'm still living. <laughs> um, opened the pasta shop in September. It's a retail shop. It's pasta, so pasta, so sauces and such. It's also a sandwich shop. We're open. We're in full swing. We're only doing curbside. side. We don't let anybody inside. Uh, we're taking all the precautions. Um, you know, 10 months ago, I wouldn't have wished that upon anybody. And now I'm seeing everybody go through the exact same thing that I had to go through. So believe me, it's 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 heart wrenching to see that all over again. I mean, sure. You know, nine of nine of you here, and then hundreds of thousands of people, like tens and hundreds of thousands of people across the country losing restaurants, losing jobs. Who knows what that's going to do? You know, the stats are, are constantly up and down and left and right. Who's going to reopen? Who's not going to reopen? Who can afford to reopen? How many jobs are lost? Um, devastating. You know, we, we started really following this in December. You know, we're a small crew. There's only six of us. So we're with each other every day. Just everybody is. We start to chatter. It's like, you know, what's this shit going on in China? And now all of a sudden it's starting to spread. And, and then it was Italy and Europe. And then all of a sudden it comes here. So, you know, we've been, as everybody has, we've got our thumb on it the whole time. And, and Mike, has your Mike has your business gone up since this happened? I, I, I hate talking about it, but yeah, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's not good thing. It's, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, honestly, that's great. It's, it's, I feel terrible like, talking about things like that because I don't want people to think it's like a blow. You know what I mean? No, oh, that makes me happy. It makes us like want to work harder. Yes. It is, it is. You know, it is up. Really if, doing if, 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 if I had Pig and Prince, not only would we be closed. But that would be the end. There would be renewal. I would, right. Financially, I would never have been able. I was by myself. You know, I didn't have anything behind me. And well, I, it's funny that you say that because I was actually completely and utterly shocked by Gotham announcing, with everything happening, that they're closing indefinitely, just like that. Mm-hmm. People yeah. can't. Keep, I mean, it's it's think about it, you know, like Ryan, you said it the other day in something that you put. We, and, and we all know this. We work on such a razor thin uh, margins, and it's like something is devastating. Who knows? Could it be two weeks? Could it be two months? You know, there you, you got the Blasio talking about not re- reopening New York restaurants in September. That's insanity. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, and you know, New Jersey, New Jersey's going to jump right on board. We're right yeah. there. We're, we're the sixth. You know, we're the sixth borough to that. So it's like it, it, it's it's such a such an unknown variable being thrown at us it's such an, a crazy um i i have a question how long so all of you have places how long do you think you can sustain being closed um and still actually reopen mm-hmm. yeah. I, i'm I, gonna i'm gonna open i I'll, I'll open all three restaurants it'll be um you know the, we'll, if, they, if we need money we'll make capital calls on the in jersey city um, the one that is 17 years old in Montclair is owned. I own with my family. I opened it in, in my early twenties. It's fantastic. Uh, and my, yeah. thank you, Peter. Uh, my fa- So, you know, my father's like, he's like, you know, we're not going to pay anybody until all this is, is happening. We have great relationships with everybody. They're going to have to understand, you know, and, and keep in mind, um, I have a little, power behind all three because of Patello. It's 10,000 square feet. We do over $7 million a year. So the uh, vendors are completely and utterly in love with us because we pay on time and we give them a lot of business. So for for us to be like, let us pay you over off over time, they're going to, they're all going to say, okay, for every restaurant. Um, But Will we have to invest money? Absolutely. You know, and we'll probably 
you know, borrow some money for Fashino, either a small an SBA loan or you know, a home equity loan. My father's, you know, his house is paid off. We can do that. Um, you know, there, there's some tricks, you know, as long as you don't find yourself, um, you know, in, a home, in the massive home. You right. know? Indeed. What well, you yeah. do, you, do you think you could last like like do you think you can last like three weeks six weeks three months closed i um, don't even want to answer that question <laughs> new york right now yeah. today said that's our best bet that's our earliest and most likely it'll be september so so, so when we when the so we closed Vitello three years ago i don't know if you remember me saying that because the peer that it sits on uh moved um, we closed for 18 months. Oh, wow. Okay. Because of a constructional uh, issue, right? It was a constructional issue. Yeah. Yeah. So they redid the whole pier. It took us 18 months to reopen. Um, we did a capital call. We lost you. There you are. Yeah. Somebody was <laughs> calling me, but I, I declined Got it. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. It's, I, doable. It, it's, it's very doable. Uh, but you have to have the support system between everybody that is a financial partner you know i think i think we're all hoping for some financial hope i mean and help yeah That's yeah I, I think that i think that I, I was on the i don't know if anybody was on the the, the national uh, restaurant association's phone call this morning um the the the, the idea of the insurance companies bailing us out uh, with business interruption, uh, seems like it's not going to happen whatsoever. The insurance companies are pushing so hard that uh, it seems like they're almost going to drop the idea of even trying to do this bill. But the one thing that seemed kind of positive was is that they were going to try and um, give the money for your employee costs up to 250% of it. So whatever it costs you $5,000 a week, you know, they were saying 250% of that is what you would get, mm -hmm. which seems crazy that they would come up with such a huge number. Um, but if, if that was passed, that would be huge for all restaurants. I think that it would bail a lot of them out. What about for you, Hillary, on that question? I mean, we, we're, we're actually going to meet tomorrow with an insurance adjuster to see what's happening in New York City. If, if it is filed as like a national emergency or disaster, the insurance companies have a different, you know, we're waiting for what the governor really says. And we'll find out more tomorrow about that New York City rule. Um, I mean, I think this all comes down. Yes, we will reopen. We are blessed. I, we do. We just resigned a 10-year lease. We will make it happen, whether it's me standing there making the dough for days on days, like with his eyes. Elizabeth's laughing because she knows I'll do it. But we will reopen in some capacity. We are also blessed to Vic to have a family-owned landlord that has bought the building a very long time ago. So we'll make it happen. But, you know, on another note, you know, Claire, it's a great point. But isn't anyone else concerned about where your staff is going to home? And what are they coming back to the restaurants with? And then what are they going back and forth with? And that was a big conversation we had because we can't track 300 employees. So, did anybody, did anybody hear about on him, if your if your um, if your employees um, if they if you give them a paycheck but they don't have a number per se that they can collect. Did anybody, did anybody get the unemployment? Uh, I think that's a tough call for us. Um, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. That was, we got, I got a thing from unemployment about that. Mm. And I sent it to my staff. The ones who get a paycheck, but, you know. Claire, what about for you? You've been, you know, obviously you're, you know, we were just at Barbudo who just, what, he just kind of reopened his place, yeah. Jonathan Waxman. We just went there. I mean, and what's funny is you're so chill of a person and you were kind of like freaking out about this, the virus. And I, and I was clueless about it, but wow, that was I wrong. But anyway, 
<laughs> um, what's going on for you? You 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 know you eat out a lot. You're uh, totally always around in New York City. So talk to me about some of your friends and what they're saying. Uh, well, first off, I've already had Corona. Um, oh, it's, lovely. Yeah. So it was. That was uh, a couple of weeks ago that I saw you. So. Yep. <laughs> really? <laughs> you might want to get tested. Right. No, it's uh, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't great. It's like a flu. Um, for me, I'm very lucky. I'm, you know, we're all young and healthy here, but, um, you know, I could, it's, I definitely see that it's dangerous for other people. For me, it was like a flu for a couple days and then now it's passed. I've been, I'm going crazy being locked inside, but that's Same. you know part of it. I don't want to spread it to anybody. And I don't, you know, now I guess I can't get it again. So I'd probably be the prime person once I'm cleared to get out and help somebody. Um, is I that have, the- uh, obviously, I'm not going out to eat anywhere, um, nor is there anywhere to go eat. I found that um, I've spoken to friends that have restaurants, you know, across the city and across the country, and sadly, um, some major players are not, and that's a definite. Um, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, I actually did the math on how many friends have told me how many people have been laid off, and this is just friends through text and uh, it was 2,700 people that have been laid off in our business that they had to let their entire staffs go and they're not coming back. They're sitting on 15 leases. Insurance is not coming in to help. Um, I, you know, oddly I'm so scared about getting Corona. (laughs) Corona wasn't that bad. This is bad. I'm really, (laughs) see, I'm a little concerned about the, you know, you know what we're going into i've also had friends um that have restaurants you know up in harlem for example a, a buddy that's saying he's more concerned about the community itself that he's got families who've been out of work for two weeks um they're hour to hour paycheck kind of people and they've been coming in and asking because he's been doing takeout and delivery if they could come in and clean his restaurant or anything in exchange for food i mean that's what i'm starting to see in new york is you're we're looking at a long term, you know, I, I think we're going to be really lucky. The restaurants like Hillary, like, oh, by the way, I'll come help you make dough. I mean, once I'm <laughs> Corona free, I'll get my hands in there. Um, right. But it's uh, I do think that it's 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 a little bleaker um, when I'm hearing dates like May 7th and then possibly September. I think that there are a lot of restaurants here that if you're lucky enough to have a family run uh, or family owned building, then you can actually deal with a person. But New York for a good part of it is not family owned buildings. You're looking at massive corporate deals that it's not going to be so easy to make these lease deals go away. I mean, I talked to a friend of mine who's sitting literally on 15 leases after having to let go of a thousand employees and, and, and he can't get out of it. It like, you know, I mean, not only is it going to destroy their, their businesses are destroyed. They're personally going to be destroyed here financially. So I'm hoping that the May 7th date, you know, that's already in place, I guess, but I'm hoping September isn't on the table because I also am concerned about the way people are going to see going back to eating in restaurants. I don't know if the hey. vibe is people are going to have a fear or are I they going to be like, woohoo, we got out of our house. But it's at restaurants and like you can't go to what sports arena, you know, Madison Square Garden, no concert, nothing like that. There's, I mean, you can go, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, I think it, it is I, a long-term thing to really try to rethink how you can do what you do. That's I'm. I think everybody needs to like really think about what you can do over the next year in a different way than you're used to. And I, I have a brother who's a rock musician who plays for Beck, and so of course all of their world tour is on hold right now. And um. And he's just like somebody who's a busybody recording artist person. And I'm like, you know, and he can't even, and he's in the middle of moving right now here in LA. And, and uh, I'm just like, you're going to have to like, just make acoustic, you know, streaming videos or something just to preoccupy yourself or rethink. It's like none of the way we've been doing business our whole lives or how we were brought up in this is going to be the same. So you have to kind of, I don't know. I'm, I'm also terrified like everybody, but I'm like, all I can think about is like, how do we reprogram everything that we do? You know, maybe it's 
really figuring out a brick and mortar situation that is doing delivery or like you said, like a hub um, of a market and, but rethinking how you get customers in. It's a really different scenario looking forward, I think. And you know, you you have a lot of events, you, 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 you're, you're consulting, so you're doing a lot of that kind of stuff. All of that's gonna be shut down as well, so. It's all a I, clear calendar until Hawaii <laughs> <from Hawaii. laughs> but So how does that affect you? I mean, you're in LA and, and whatnot. I mean, and you traveled, I think you traveled during all this as well, right? Uh, I came to Los Angeles, um, it's been like 10 days ago. Hi. Like right before, <laughs> hey, right sorry, before sorry. Um, the total, I mean, I was kind of nervous to fly here, but then I got on JetBlue and it was about 15 people on my plane. There you go. Wow. So, Wild. and everybody was wearing a mask and, you know, I was like, I don't think this is a great idea, but I really, my parents live here and I thought if I'm stuck somewhere, I'd rather be here than New York just because yeah. of my family. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, I'm not really a restaurant consultant, but I do so many events and recipe development and thinking about food of the future with different different kinds of projects. And, you know, I I guess I'm sort of trying to repaint a picture of what food in, food in the future looks like. And I, would love to, I, I want to keep com talking to everybody who's coming out of the restaurant world because I left my restaurant world full time six years ago. So I've, I'm emotionally capable of handling this. What I'm, I'm actually feeling all of your pain so much from closing your restaurants because it's not just the virus and what's going on with the economics, but it's the psychology of like emotionally losing everything that you've been working on. And, um, and I think this is so shocking for everybody. Um, so I, I want to just, I personally just want to encourage people to, um, you know, try to walk away from the social media and television a little bit in the day and do something completely different that, that you haven't done for a long time. Like, um, some other kind of exercise that you're not even into, um, <laughs> you know, something totally different or start working on a different kind of cooking that you've never been interested in. You might as well just time to do that and rethink about what's next i think that's a good question for all of you is there anything like that that you've been doing even just from a cooking perspective learning a new dish you know uh, doing demos online i know Ariane, i saw you doing some live streams and whatnot what are you guys kind of all doing start with Ariane. yeah i've been having a lot of fun with a quick 10 minute um, live video, cooking video um, with my daughter and my son. And we just make a little family affair tonight. We did guacamole. My daughter's the way I go. I mean, it's fun. Um, so, and as you see, so many people, I've had people connect with me from Nashville, from Bay, from, um, you know, all places that them or work with them in other parts of the um, country. So that's really nice just for a little quick check-in um, and that they really, I made banana bread and people were inspired to make banana bread and it's all about cleaning out your fridge and your freezer. So I'm having fun with that. Nice. What about, uh, what about you, Hillary? Um, I, I'm doing the same with my freezer. Someone gave me a piece of elk. Um, I'm really digging deep, but I've been baking bread. Um, I'm making my own starter and then using the starter waste to make products out of it. Um, you know, I'm working, um, my nephews and I, they're being homeschooled out in San Francisco right now. So we're working on a cooking class together, what I can do with them. Because they they walk into Vix and they, they go back to the kitchen and they think they own it and they make pizza like it's their job. So, which I'll be calling on them shortly as well. In <laughs> to <May>. make dough. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Caroline? Um, I have been, um, you know, it's obviously it's been very emotionally <laughs> difficult, <laughs> um, like week and whatever, um, cooking a lot, um, trying to get exercise when it's safe to be out, um, been in touch with my family a lot. My brother is, um, 
runs an ICU actually. So he's been like very much on the front lines of this. Um, so kind of like staying in touch with him about sort of what's going on in their world. Um, and, um, you know, just really avoiding doing my taxes. Um, well, you know, right I've got like nothing but time now and I'm like, right. sorry. <laughs> don't, don't have time to do that. Um, no, it's I like, I'm not gonna lie. It's been like really difficult. Um, but uh, I've been cooking every day, which feels really nice. So yeah. How about you, Leah? Um, I will agree with Caroline and say that it has been extremely emotional. Um, you know, I, I think when we decided to close last week, like I freaked out, like it was like extremely depressing. This is my whole entire life. Like I love, like the restaurant is like the love of my life. And to think that that could all be taken away so easily was like, I was in a bad place on Wednesday and I am just so happy be in the kitchen cooking again like it gives me joy to make people happy like whether it's we're making them fried chicken or a burger for dinner or they're ordering groceries from us so that they so that, like elderly people don't have to go to the supermarket like it feels good to do good and I think um we ran it like really lean so I really haven't had much time to do anything but I think like we might also implement a little like pop-up shop for takeout and to go to like start playing with a different concept that I have. And also, um, I guess like maybe just start playing with like some different dishes that we want to make and like run it as a special on the weekend and, and like hit it heavy on social media and get the word out there just to like play a little bit and get out of the monotony a little. Totally. Allison, I don't think you've said anything. <laughs> sorry. Uh, that, I'm you know, sorry. I, always have, I actually always have a lot of things to say. You know? Yeah. <laughs> And I always like to make people laugh. You know, food and laughter is kind of what I'm after. So I always have a lot of jokes to tell. <laughs> we needed that. Yeah, um, you know, I this? just wanted to save up, you know, I comic relief. This is kind of like intermission, you know. <laughs> How has it been for you? You know, I think I'm the only one here that's um, living on Long Island. I did grow up in Brooklyn. So, um, you know, it's been a little bit very difficult just like everybody's been saying and uh you know the last year i've been trying to really get into like being fitness and being a lot healthier so on this time off i still uh kept up with that and i've been going running outside i know a few people uh stop because they're surprised that i'm actually running they make sure that i'm okay or they're like allison is that you i'm like it's me you know i was just like holding on holding up the tree on the corner for a few minutes you know i'm like i'm good though um so but i've been trying to get into like fitness and stuff like that so i think working out and you know feeling good is basically a good uh start yeah you know it kind of takes your mind off of a, a few things and i've been reaching out to a lot of local restaurants and chefs here on the island i know a few of them are doing uh take out and carry out actually um there's a chef from new jersey who just opened the restaurant not too long ago eric levine i think some of you might yep. know eric um so i reached out to him and i just wrote hey so when this is over we're doing something to get um business to all these restaurants right and he was like absolutely so right now we're kind of thinking of like brainstorming some ways to get people into these uh restaurants and what event can we do what can we host what can we do to sure. really give back business and really kind of you know get people back out to these restaurants because it's so important to support your local uh businesses and i talked to eric several times this week to see how he's doing i know his restaurant's still open i saw today he was actually pretty busy with uh, deliveries and i've been in contact with a couple other places here on long island to kind of see what i could do and what i could help i actually help the local butcher shop uh, during the week to, you know, we butchered 10 cases of chicken and I was like, okay, I'll help you. Of course, we all were so far apart from each other and I pretty much worked by myself in a really cold room, but, you know, we sold out 
of all the chicken and those were, you know, people getting, you know, deliveries or whatever they were getting for their homes and for their families. So if I could do something as small as stand in a room by myself to butcher chicken or skirt steaks or I was breaking down New York strips, you know, if I could do that little thing to get food into people's homes and kind of, you know, do what I can in this time, you know, I think as chefs were, you know, always on the front line of a crisis and a time like this, you know, we're all like doors are closed, you know, like what can we do to help even if it's the littlest uh, gest- gesture, you know, and I was actually last week um, scheduled to be a keynote speaker at Hofstra for their winning women's conference and that got canceled. So I have a whole speech prepared that uh, <laughs> no one's gonna hear, but I did write you it down. Just now, girl, guys, no. here's your no, 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 no. <laughs> right. no, stop. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what about you, Ryan? Have, have have you been messing around with any new dishes or anything like that? Or what's your take on it? Um, I didn't just. I've been working out a lot. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, I've been working out a lot. Um, you know, we do have two little ones at home and my wife is homeschooling <laughs> one of them. Um, and, uh, it's obviously, uh, very <laughs> not easy. Definitely not easy. <laughs> um, I'm not doing any of the homeschooling by the way, <laughs> uh, but the other one's only two years old. Um, there's also a 14 year old. So, uh, I've been cooking a lot, but it's really just been for the family. Right. I haven't had a chance to really test anything out. Um, I, it's funny. Hillary mentioned baking bread. I have over in the corner um, uh, a, a, a starter because I wanted to make bake some bread. Um, so that this is my first time really toying with bread. Uh, but that's really that's really it. Um, and drinking a lot of really good wine. So I'm nice. either going to come out of COVID-19 looking like a gladiator or an alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> um, both. Uh, both. <laughs> what about you, Robbie? I mean, honestly, I've been, I feel like I've been working more because we're going so light staffed and kind of getting in there to try and get this market set up and make it look good and, you know, minimal staff. I mean, dude, it's just been like a complete whirlwind. Like I just don't have emotions. It's almost like living a bad dream every day, hoping I'm going to like wake up from it, you know, texting Ryan, texting all my other friends in the industry, you know, talking about it, but at the same time, kind of like, you know, grinding. I go from, you know, getting up at, you know, 7.30 and instead of going to the gym, going right to the market these days to set that up at Viaggio do the market all day and then kind of scramble to get set up at four o'clock to be like cooking on the line to do delivery and take out. So, I mean, I'm still out there grinding. Um, it's just a little different now. It's, you sure. know, it's not like watching over two restaurants. It's, it's like, I'm kind of back in the whole mess. Yeah. I mean, it's just been a whirlwind. I mean, I think all these guys can kind of vouch for that. Yeah. How about you, Mike cooking, anything, doing anything, getting any ideas? Uh, I have two kids, um, so half the week I'm a teacher. At home <laughs> we have very, they have a very regimented day, starting at seven thirty, going till three. You know, everything in there is from reading to writing to creative writing to lunch and snacks and breaks and whatever. Um, trying to get outside when I can. I was working on a project. Up until- I was slated to be uh, an instructor at a cooking school. Cooking school is closed, so that never mm-hmm. happened. And then I was working on uh, a new restaurant project that is probably not going to happen mm. at all. Um, so I had been putting a lot of time into that. Um, I'm just, I, I guess I'm just trying to just be reactive and just absorb everything. Yeah. Try to be forward thinking. I'm doing, I'm doing something with Ani Ramen next week. We're doing a big charity donation because we're still operating. So we still have product going in and out. So we're doing a huge uh, donation to Claremont Hospital, the uh, Nutley Family Service Bureau, which is the town that the shop is in, uh, Salvation Army, Montclair, and then uh, Police Fire, EMS, and those, those departments too. 
So we're gonna we're gonna whatever we can do to you know help out who needs it right now. Since we're still operating, we still have both food and money flowing through. Whatever we can do to to add sustenance to the people that need it right now. So How about you, Claire? Sorry. And whatnot. I'm just I'm just trying to we're just trying to survive at the moment. And, uh, yeah. Do that. How about you, and Claire? When it kind of blows over, if if and when it does, then we'll figure out what we're going to do next. Totally. How about you, Claire? Uh, well. <laughs> Besides, besides survive, getting through this virus, yeah. yeah, yeah. Besides actually having Corona, I have uh, been drinking heavily. And... <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, <laughs> because that gets you through Corona as well. Hot toddies, and uh, I actually started brushing back up on my French, which is still pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've watched everything every channel has. Like Netflix has been smoking it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Actually, I've been watching uh, the show that Elizabeth's on. Did you guys have you guys all seen that? The Tournament of Champions. Uh, I just watched Elizabeth. I just watched you literally before this call. Yeah, it's good. It's really Elizabeth, good. Elizabeth, I love you on camera. You are amazing to oh, watch. You. Seriously. <laughs> You're so sweet. Cheers. Oh, that nice. <laughs> You're oh. awesome. Um, but Claire, good question though. I mean, in terms of food television, I'm sure all the productions have gone have have probably you know seized up as well. So what's happening? Everything like? is dark. Uh, food Network is dark. All production that I know of is dark. Although oddly, I think this would be a great time for all of these. Like every one of you have some amazing recipes. I think there should be some pantry something going on right now because everybody's totally. literally cooking out of their pantries. But, you know, it's the time that I think TV's about ready to take a really big turn because it just, yeah. this is where you hold up the iPhone and, and yeah. you know, share your recipes because... It's true. There's a, there was a cook um, who just did the beard house for uh, International Women's Day. Her name's Brianna Cooper, and she just moved from D.C. to Brooklyn. Super talented, and he was like, "Chef, I'm really depressed, and you know, do you have any thoughts?" And I'm like, "Well, oh, you, I understand your depression, and it, this is a really crazy time for, and you're not alone." And um, I'm like, well, you know, you're such a good cook. People want to see, they want to see what you're doing, and they want to, you know, everything I keep posting. People are like, "Can you please give me the recipe?" And I'm like, "No, just pay attention to the details. It's, I'm not doing that." <laughs> but um. But it's true. I think every single chef and cook out there that um, even if you think, oh, my God, it's oversaturated. What? Well, how am I any different or whatever? Just do it because, you know, people are just we need some kind of inspiration. And people, it's a lot of hours in a day. Chefs should be able to post and stuff, not just random bloggers. Basically. So, yeah. <laughs> that's what I think. So I want to how you really do. Things, you know? I want to give you all a chance. I know you guys. Some of you have Kickstarters or Go GoFundMe's that you're trying to raise awareness to. So I wanted to give each of you guys. And if there's one that you're, even if you're not, don't have one, and you want to shout somebody or something out, go for it. But I know Leah, you've got a GoFundMe going on, right? Yeah. Um. I probably had a layoff. Like, I don't know, maybe sixty people, almost seventy people. Um, and unemployment isn't your full paycheck. And, you know, like n none of us know how long this is going to last to hear that it could last until September is frightening. Um, so I'm just trying to generate some, something nice for my staff. I mean, because honestly, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have two businesses. I wish that I had, you know, $40,000 to be able to divvy up among them. Um, and, and I worry about them too, you know, just like Arian, I like, that's one of my biggest stressors right now is like worrying about my staff who are used to making a certain amount of money and now are not going to be able to do that. And like, ugh, it's heartbreaking. I, I, I cried. I cried so much last week. It's, it's devastating. So like anything, um, that we can raise for that is amazing and we've already raised like 3500 bucks so i'm um, right. you know anything helps ryan i think you've got one too right uh we have one for each restaurant um the so my two restaurants in jersey city are, are, are with separate business partners um and originally when we talked about it i was just like 
I don't know. I think it's like, I feel like everybody's taking advantage of GoFundMe. You know, I, I feel like it's not really going to go anywhere. Um, you know, but then um, I started thinking about no matter what amount it is, if you're handing people that work for you uh, money that was donated by guests that love your restaurant, whatever amount it is, whether you're handing them a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars each, they know that you're, you're going up, you're batting for them, you know? And that's really what it came down to was that I needed to bat for my staff. Um, you know, in, in Jersey city, um, everybody's been super su supportive. Um, there were all three of them are hovering around $6,000 Though Fashino, I only started yesterday and it got to six thousand in two days. But it's also again open seventeen years, and it's probably got the most close knit customers out of all the restaurants because um, one, it's been around so long. Two, it has the, the longest employees. I have employees from ten to seventeen years that have worked for me. Um, at that restaurant, they're like family. So, you know, I'm, I'm almost never in Montclair. I'm always pretty much in Jersey city and there's so many faces that my guests are happy to see when I'm not there, which makes it that much more comfortable, um, for them. So, uh, we've had a very strong go at the GoFundMe for the last 48 hours. Um, and you know, whatever it is at the end of the week, uh, I'll, I'll divvy it up between the staff of, of full-time and part-time employees. Um, and I'm hoping that if the numbers could go down just a little bit, I know that it sounds crazy to say that, but if the numbers go down at all, I'm going to, I'm going to reopen for takeout and delivery. Good. Yeah. And, and may steal Robbie's idea of the marketplace too. <laughs> Anyone You've else been doing it for years, old man? <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone of you else have a GoFundMe or something that you want to plug out or GoFundMe page up right now? We're we're just hovering around twenty thousand for the uh, four restaurants, um, and it's really honestly, you know, we went swinging, and it's really wonderful. It's just the outreach, the people, the guests, even the people that don't even get to come all the time. Just their messages to. To understand that this goes directly to our employees it has nothing to do with us it goes to them and what we want to do is to make sure that they're taken care of they know that they have a job they're welcome and that whatever they need we're there to help them and whether it's 50 bucks or I go to the restaurant and give them every ounce of dry goods I have and deliver it to their house they know that that's what we're doing for them so I mean I don't know how much money it's gonna be but right now we're at 20 um, so it's it's, I mean, it's building, and I think if we keep pushing and keep reminding people we're, we all need help right now, um, those guests, they're there to support us. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't be afraid to ask people, you know, to, like, I posted it today uh, on Facebook saying, I'm friends with 2,700 people. If everybody gave $3, I'd be up over $8,000. $3. Right. $3. Yeah. You know, so... Um, every amount counts, uh, and I think you just got to keep reminding people, um, that, you know, that we did so much for them when they come to the restaurants, right? How many, how many desserts have you come? How many, how many people have you snuck into a, a, a completely booked reservation? Um, you know, you have all, how many of you have been involved in fundraisers and helped raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for these fundraisers. Now it's time for, for, for us to ask. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because you know that when we reopen those guests that donated, you know, you're going to repay them with some kind of thank you. Totally. Mm -hmm. Anybody else with GoFundMe's or anything? like yeah, that? Yeah, we have one going. Um, we just kind of agreed, you know, we saw everyone else doing it. And like, I mean, my two staffs are like the tightest knit group family that I've like ever seen. Like, I mean, best friends, they'll work 12, 13, 14 hours a day. And then they're hanging out after work, before work, like 
driving to work together. So, I mean, when I say it's family, they are like really all like family and me and my uh, director of operations just kind of decided, you know, let's throw this up there. And just like all you guys said, you know, whether it's throwing $50 at each employee or throwing a thousand dollars at each employee, just to be able to help them out and be able to have like given the chance to have people kind of, you know, repay us or just give something to help these guys out. You know, it's, it's just really a sad story having to, you know, I had to lay off, I had to lay off just as many employees, whether it be 40, 50 employees. I mean, I'm only 29 years old. I have some employees that have, you know, kids, wives, things like that. So for me to sit there, it's just like mind boggling to think about that. Yeah. Anybody else with the uh, GoFundMe's or anything? That's cool. Um, listen, I want to ask a few of you, uh, Elizabeth, there's probably chefs that are going to be watching this, you know, uh, outside of the group that's here. What what advice do you have for chefs that are watching this, that are go kind of going through, that are in this, like the rest of the bunch? I mean, I think the main thing right now is for, for all of us really to even – besides the people that are our guests and customers or people that we've done fundraisers for, to really like, harass government officials because they're not, they can't really hear it. They, they're, we're so far down in the totem pole themes, or it sounds like from them, that like we have just got to get really aggressive in many ways, you know, even calling to them, like everybody is posting. But like seriously, like harassing them because we need to get on the radar of like this is a severe economic problem. Instead of like Reaganomics, it's trickle up and instead of trickle down. And um, and I'm just I'm so concerned like you are of all of the you know, dishwashers and prep cooks and you know and every single massive part of this industry is just not getting any all the way to the caviar and couple purveyors. They're not getting into anybody open. So like the effects of all of that just product not getting into distribution is just pretty scary. So I think like making all those things known to every single government official, people you know, we I mean we vote for people, so they need to like know what the problems are. Yeah. Caroline, for you, that's, uh, you know, in this position of, you know, just getting this thing and, you know, and now it's kind of on hold. I'm sure there's a lot of other employees that are going through something very similar. What advice do you, I mean, I know, you know, you're probably at a loss, at a loss in some ways. Yeah. But what advice? I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't really have much advice. Um, I like I feel it's a it's just a horrible feeling to just feel totally like helpless um, because uh, I, I mean I, yeah I don't really know I think I think Elizabeth is right I think like especially just on a local level like New York New Jersey like we have pretty powerful local politicians because our states have really big economies. And so I think um, that is something we can do. Um, but I mean, you know, in New York, the restaurant industry, be it like fine dining or fast casual delis, coffee shops, whatever it is, we're the largest single employer in New York state. We're talking millions of people. So if all of those people who are, you know, laid off or whatever, if everybody makes a phone call, that's a shit ton of phone calls. Um, so, yeah, I guess, like, make some noise, get aggressive. I, mean, I know about the glamorous side of anything, but it's kind of just the reality, you know? It's like, yeah. I hate that kind of stuff, too. But it's just like, wow, we have to make louder gestures in saying, hey, it's not we're not just doing this for you know our own pleasure really i mean the cooking part of what our restaurateur's job is so minimal compared to everything else you have to do in management so in this i guess we just need to manage on a higher level some of those people's the way they look at the business yeah how about you claire 
you have any advice for the people you know a lot of people that are going through this i mean a thousand percent i agree with, with elizabeth i uh, and caroline i think that right now um just to remind y'all that if, you know the restaurant industry is the highest payroll in the entire country i think our problem that i've now noticed is we are not a group as like right now they're talking about bailouts immediately for the airlines if they don't bail us out in some way you're losing the highest payroll in the country mm -hmm. so we have a leg to stand on but we have to band together and fight a little bit and you can go find my booze problem <laughs> I'm now created if you want to go find some, something else otherwise uh, i would say hopefully people will help y'all and i would recommend that you know, I think that the GoFundMe's are great, but we need something bigger than that. I think we're looking at a bigger problem ahead of us. Um, luckily, you know, the ones with more experience, 17 years, you've closed for 18 months before, you know, you might be able to get through this, but this is, this is a, we've, we're facing some a big hurdles. So if we don't join together somehow and come up with a plan of what we really need to get our places back open, um, I think it's going to, you know, individually, yes, we're going to have to figure it out, but I think we do have a leg to stand on if we band together in some way, because just to remind everybody, we are the largest industry in the country. Hospitality and restaurants by far are the highest payroll. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, I think this was a really good chat. I think we just kind of scratched the surface on some of this. Um, I've eaten at all of your restaurants, uh, for those that have them, and I've eaten, you know, pretty much at all your places and whatnot. And, uh, I wanted to just thank you guys as a restaurant patron. I can't wait to get back to all your food and your places and whatnot. And I'm sure there's a lot of, uh, patrons that are listening to this that also feel the same exact way. So, uh, thanks for joining me here today and, uh, hopefully good is coming down the line. Um, and we'll all be out eating soon. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. I think also, I mean, everything, I agree with everything everybody's saying. One thing I think that we should touch on, and this is really close to me, we, we all have hundreds, if not thousands of friends. Call them. Yeah. Because mental health right now is mm. so important. And, like, the emotional strain that this takes, I, I've been through it. I mean, obviously, we're all going through it. Pick up the phone. How you doing? How you handling this? A simple phone call goes a long way. Yeah. I think and that is another way, like Claire was saying, it helps bond us and band us all together. Just just knowing that even in the darkest times, we're all still connected. So just a simple phone call. Keep keep them awesome. Up. Yeah, it's great Four advice. I love that. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> was that Ariane? Yeah, I just said, let's all keep in touch. I just, I love listening to what each and every one of you have said. And it was really um, just something really refreshing. And I think it was really needed. I don't know all of that. This was a pleasure to meet you. Um, I, unfortunately, at a time like this, this isn't the way I wanted to meet you. Uh, but I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. And um, I'm not working right now. So if any of you need help, happy to do whatever i can um and that's it cool, thank guys. you thanks everybody i really yeah, appreciate uh, you guys jumping in here good to all see right. all of you yeah thank you too you. all right have a good one guys bye guys bye. 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 bye today's episode of the pop-up podcast was brought to you by sunspot films thanks for listening for updates check out poppuppodcast.com